Hang Seng stocks plunged to their lowest levels since April 2009, leading losses in the Asia-Pacific. The Chinese economic crisis might be taking a toll on the index. Michael Burry, a legendary investor who is known to get the best value for his investments. Today, we are talking about Michael Burry and his recent views on why he thinks China is an excellent market to buy. Now Michael Burry has said it is time to buy China, and he feels that the world order will change drastically in the coming time. Yet how true is this statement from him? Is there indeed an opportunity in China for you to grow your money? To find out, stay tuned to the video till the end. Michael Burry is enthusiastic about something. The Hang Seng Index in this scenario. Michael Burry observes that meeting the new boss is the same as meeting the previous boss. After 25 years, Hang Seng Index finally returned to 1997 levels. However, the GDP multiplied 18 times. In 1997, the valuation was 20 times earnings, 10x EV divided by sales, 3x tangible book, now 7 to 1 1. It is worth noting that three of the most recent premiers serve three terms. Hidden links to a chart that shows the Hedger Index, which has dropped significantly. For 2022, Hang Seng increased by more than 30%. This is far worse than the S&P 500, Shanghai, or Shenzhen indexes. Similarly, Hang Seng has gained 40% in the last five years, while the SP 500 has gained more than 40%. As a result, it has underperformed other paid market indices significantly. Michael Burry's tweet appears to have triggered Xi Jinping's election to a third term. As a result, he said, meet the new boss the same as the previous boss. The Hang Seng market fell more than 6% after Xi Jinping was elected for a third term. Specific names, such as Alibaba, fell by more than 11%. As a result, Michael Burry implies that the Hang Seng may be pretty inexpensive in general. But it begs whether Michael Burry is correct or whether investing in the Hang Seng Index carries considerable dangers. What are the chances that this is just a value trap? Prices may be low because they should be low. What exactly is a value trap? A value trap is a stock or other investment that looks undervalued because it has been trading at low valuation metrics for an extended period, such as price to earnings, price to cash flow, or price to book value. If you invest in them, you are taking a significant risk. As growth prospects improve, the cost of capital may have risen or been on the verge of growing. Let's start by determining whether Michael Burry's value metrics are correct. Does Hang Seng appear to be cheap in nominal terms? Hang Seng has completely collapsed. Throughout 2022, it has essentially nosedived. It has crashed and dropped by more than 30%. It appears to be continually heading lower, as we indicated when Xi Jinping was elected for a third term. However, even before 2022, we witnessed concerns with the more significant tech sector and accounting issues with property developers, which caused a negative vibe. It also demonstrated that the property sector was a bit of a house of cards. China Evergrande was likely the classic case, although other examples, such as Country Garden, faced similar problems although not to the same extent as China Evergrande. There was also a tech crackdown, which impacted corporations such as Alibaba. As a result, several of these stocks were dealing with broader regulatory and price difficulties, justified a decrease in valuations. Looking at the valuation indicators, we can see that stock prices have fallen, just as Michael Burry predicted. Not long ago, the Hang Seng Index's average price-to-earnings ratio was 20. It is now roughly seven times that make products appear cheap. The PEG ratio, which measures the earnings growth of prices, has also dropped. It has nearly halved since its most recent peak, suggesting that even after allowing for growth, their costs have dropped dramatically. This is interesting since it indicates that the price decline is not only due to growth expectations, it is because of broader concerns about the solvency of some of these companies. There are also ongoing concerns about the cost of financing, which may necessitate regulatory involvement. These initiatives may jeopardize the financial future of some of these enterprises. To be sure, some of these regulatory initiatives are necessary. 
it is appropriate for the Chinese government to investigate anti-competitive behavior, oligopolies, and monopolies. To ensure that these businesses are following all applicable requirements, it is critical to preserve consumer data, and several tech businesses have expressed worries. They were not functioning in a consumer-friendly manner, and regulatory crackdowns were warranted. We can also look at additional metrics, such as price to book, if the measure you're using is now below, at least on average. Some of these enterprises' book values are now clearly visible. Property developers, for example, experience significant challenges. There are concerns about property prices remaining at historical levels. As a result, these values do not always reflect the underlying value of these items. As a result, the book price may be slightly low, especially given how low some of these enterprises' costs are. EV sales have also decreased significantly, indicating that the market does not value sales as highly as previously. As a result, Michael Burry is correct that these valuation criteria have fallen. It makes the market appear inexpensive. But the next question is if this is a value trap. We must consider the prospects for companies listed on Hang Seng. Are there any issues you should be concerned about? This is where we differ slightly from Michael Burry. To make a judgment, we would look at specific companies and valuation methodologies. You will notice that these companies face significantly more significant microtype challenges when we do so. So what are the roadblocks preventing us from completely embracing Michael Burry's remarks? The risk created by regulators. Some regulatory interventions have occurred in the past, and some of these make much sense. You want to get rid of the bad actors in particular. You want to stop unscrupulous companies from scamming customers or investors. You don't want those corporations ripping people off. You don't wish corporations to abuse their monopolistic or oligopoly power. This is neither helpful for investors nor good for market functionality. As a result, some of these regulatory actions were entirely justified. Some regulatory interventions have been made, and some produce much sense. You want to eliminate the hostile actors in particular. You want to put a stop to destructive enterprises, deceiving customers or investors. You don't want those businesses ripping folks off. You don't wish to businesses abusing their monopolistic or oligopoly power. This is bad for both investors and market functionality. As a result, several of these regulatory actions were wholly justified. Shared prosperity is unlikely if businesses are unable to invest. As a result, the stock market will undoubtedly play a role. The danger is that if the companies develop too distant from the party, or become too huge to be controlled by the party, there would be crackdowns and interventions. In addition, there may be a government bias against such enterprises, which might generate severe issues for investors. Economic Fears The second concern is the state of the Chinese economy. China's GDP growth target is approximately 5.5%. However, many analysts have downloaded the growth projections for 2022 to the latest GDP statistics, which came out 3.9 years ago, though others have questioned their authenticity. There's still some not-so-great use buried inside them, particularly retail sales and services, which causes an issue because GDP computation is based on them. It will rise in line with exports and your GDP will increase automatically if you import less. If individuals become less wealthy and have fewer resources to import goods, your GDP may appear excellent, especially if your exports remain robust. As a result, the GDP year may be the inverse of what happened in the United States in the first quarter. That is certainly bad news for the market and may weigh on stock values in the future. If the economy slows slightly, stocks will often slow as well. COVID. The following topic is what is going on with COVID-0 and its ongoing problems. There is a rumor that COVID-0 is being prioritized since it helps to curb inflation. If you lock down more significant community areas, inflation will undoubtedly be lower since individuals cannot spend outside, regardless matter why COVID-0 is in place. But of course, it has an impact on growth. Given that the cost of capital has risen, Companies will be valued less in U.S. dollars if growth in the short term is slowed. As a result, values will be affected. Trade Concerns The next headwind will be ongoing trade tensions between the United States and China. 
The United States has already taken significant steps in the semiconductor industry. This may undoubtedly impact companies like XPeng and BYD due to the autonomous driving chips they would require. As a result, China will need to find alternatives to the US. The two countries' decoupling is detrimental for two reasons. First, it has the potential to reduce profitability in both sites. These semiconductor problems are not universally beneficial to the United States. They may also suffer because they lose an export market and a source of imports. These imports could have been inputs they could have used to make their items. That concludes our analysis of Michael Burry's suggestion that it is time to buy China. So, do let us know which topic we should cover next. If you enjoyed the content, give us a like and please subscribe to know more. See you at the next one.